Hey folks, Sean O'Shea here with Kawhi. Today I'd like to uh, help you with the cheek block control display. I'm here at a model CA97. This can also be found on the model CA67, the CS11, uh, CS8, and now on the CN37. Operationally between the models, there may be one or two things that are a little different. But uh, overall, what I'm going to show you today will work on any of those models. So let's get, let's get started here. First of all, when it, when it comes to uh, jumping in and finding your way around here, it's going to be about the same uh, as far as data entry. It's seven buttons total. Up, down, left, right, and then right above that, buttons one, two, and three. This beautiful... LED display is going to walk you through your options uh, at almost any time, especially with buttons one, two, three, giving you hints as far as what you need to do. While we're looking at this screen, I'd like to point out something. There has been some confusion about um, these buttons in the upper area, transpose, phones, and USB. What those are are just indicators. They're, uh, they're almost like a warning light you'd find in your car, letting you know that, uh, giving you a heads up about that. So where it says transpose right now, it's a, a black background with white lettering. If that becomes reversed, what that means is the instrument has been transposed. That's been a faux pas of mine from time to time. I'll maybe be playing a hymn at a church service and I'll have transposed it and then I go to start the next song and I'm in the wrong key because I forgot to shut the transpose off. So that's to try to give us a, a warning about that. Also, there are times that folks sit down to play the instrument and they wonder why they're not hearing any sound. Well, they may have forgotten that the headphones are plugged in. And same deal here. This is warning me that I have left a USB device hooked up here underneath uh, down by the headphone inputs. So let's jump in. Again, up, down, left, right, one, two, three. So let's get to the basic settings here. Under the menu, and here again, one, two, and three, what are our options? We want to touch two to get to the menu. First one that comes up, basic settings. Go ahead and hit enter. First one that comes up under that setting, key transpose. When I play the instrument, let's say in the key of C, but the song was actually uh, recorded in D, but I went and learned it by ear in the key of C, all I have to do is transpose up to the key that I want it to be. So you can play in any key, um, regardless of where your hand position might be. Number one, very, very easy to use. Number two, Song transpose, that is specifically for playing back a MIDI file. So you play back the song and it's, uh, here again, it's, it's maybe a, a pre-recorded MIDI file and it's not a good key for you to play in or, or to sing along with. You can go ahead and transpose the playback of that song. Tone control is, well, it's exactly that. There are several different ways that you can alter the tone here. And by using your left and right buttons, you can run through how those change. Speaker volume, here again, as a nor it's set to normal. Um, make some changes there by using the left and right buttons. Line in level. Um, as you may know, there are audio line inputs. So maybe you've got um, a CD player, let's just say, that you'd like to have up here and, and have, uh, have that CD play through your piano's sound system. You can control the level uh, that's coming in here, um, again, by using the left and right buttons. Move down to wall EQ. Right now, the, de the default is that it is on. What that means is that, is that the equalization of the sound is ideal for this sound, the soundboard speaker system found on the CA97 being up against a wall. If I had this maybe in a classroom setting or a church setting where I were faced, let's say, facing you away from the wall, I might choose to change that EQ. It's just a matter of taste. There's not a right or wrong on that. Moving down, number seven, tuning. Why would you want to tune it? It's already in perfect tune. Well, there are times that you may be playing along with an instrument that is not in perfect tune. 
A good example of that is a pipe organ. A lot of times will uh, will will change in pitch depending on the uh, on the season or the humidity found in the church. So there there may be reasons for you to want to uh, to make this instrument either a little sharp or a little flat to tune up to something else. Moving down, damper hold. I leave mine on. What that means is your let's say when you're um, playing piano and strings, your second sound usually being the pad type of a sound. Um, pad meaning just a, an ongoing type of sound like you'd find in a synthesizer or, or strings, that kind of a thing. Typically, uh, while you're using the damper pedal, it will um, allow the dampers to ring as you're playing piano, but your pad sound, the strings in my case, just die out each time you move your hand position. With damper hold on, um, the strings ring on. Let me give you an example. Let me shut it off and play piano and strings together. See, my piano is ringing, but the strings die out. Now with damper hold turned on, look what happens. allows me to be very dramatic with my instructions. All right, continuing on. Split mode, allowing you to have a sound down on the left that's different than the one on the right. Just turn it on and the default will give you a bass sound on the left, but you can go ahead in and, and change that as you see fit. Four hands mode allows us to have two identical 44 note pianos, each in the same octave. And by the way, when you enable that, uh, the person sitting on the left playing here, the left pedal becomes their sustain pedal. And uh, the person on the right, of course, they use their regular right hand sustain pedal. Pretty cool feature. Um, excellent for maybe two people working on a duet together. Uh, and in classroom settings, it allows you to double up on the number of new piano students first exploring. Kind of cool. LCD contrast is, is just that. There may be times that the lighting or the position of, of where you're going to be, you'd like it to change. You, you have that ability. Start up setting. Hmm. Well, here's a good example. I like to leave my damper hold on. I don't want to go into the menu and turn it on every time I power up the piano. So when I get this instrument set up exactly how I want it, I just go ahead and follow the instructions here. Store press record and it walks you through and that way every time you turn it on any of these changes that you've made will be remembered. Kind of cool. Conversely, um, if you've kind of messed things up somehow or something has gone afoul for whatever reason, um, you can go ahead back and uh, put this back to the factory settings just the way this instrument was uncrated and came to you from our factory. It'll be right back to that uh, by following the on-screen on screen instructions. Auto power off. I don't know if you have discovered this feature or not, but you can either shut it off so that when your instrument is turned on, it will just stay on, um, you know, all week if you like. I leave mine set to 30 minutes. So if I haven't played a note or touched this thing in half an hour, it'll go ahead and shut itself off. There are a lot of times I'll get a phone call or hear the ding of an email and I'll get up and leave the piano and gosh, it might be on all day before I notice. You can also change that to 60 minutes or 120 minutes. So half an hour, an hour or two hours or off altogether. The hymn player, um, as you know, there's Concert Magic, which has a, a bunch of popular children's and holiday songs and, and that sort of thing um, that you can play with just one finger to explore touch and timing, but it will always play the right note. There's a way of switching this over so that your selection is nothing but uh, very popular classic hymns. Very popular, of course, uh, with churches or smaller congregations that uh, maybe some Sundays their uh, pianist or organist is, uh, is absent. So it's a helpful feature then.
there you have the most basic settings, and we'll come back and explore some other things on the cheek block control display. And if there are areas of your piano that you'd like some help with, shoot me an email and let me know so that I can maybe put that in the queue if I get enough requests for it. Thanks for watching. I sure hope this helps from all of us at Kauai. Thank you so much for being a Kauai piano owner. We're grateful.